His name is Victory, and through Jesus and Jesus alone, we can overcome anything. And we're so glad you're joining us for Hope Today on this Friday. So glad to be here with Matt and Anna, and we have some exciting things to just share with you and dive into today. And Matt, tell us a little bit about what we're going to be talking about. Yeah, I'm really excited for our guest today. You know, as a worship pastor, you know I'm going to love music. So today we have Mr. Tim Menzies, who's a singer and songwriter. Um, and man, he's got a great ministry, and it's, it's affecting people all around the world. So I'm really excited to dive into his testimony and hear a little bit about how God is using his music ministry, because we know music has power, right, to break bondages and break yokes. So, and I'm really excited to hear yeah, about it. Yeah, that's right. And his music is fantastic because it has the word in it, which mm. when we sing the word, speak the word, pray the word, then we're we're just putting this power out into the environment around us. And speaking of music, I was jamming to my Christian music on the way to work today. And there's a song about like, no more shackles on my feet. Let's go. Devil's got no hold on me. So we just want you to know today that today is the day to lift up the name of the Lord and declare who he is in your life because devil's got no hold on you either. Amen. You know, I love like one thing with worship music is when we're, it's like it's a praise as a weapon. You know, yes. that is what it's all about. So no matter what worship song you listen to, just remember like you can use that to go to battle and to win. Mm -hmm. And speaking of winning, have super exciting news. We want to say a big congratulations to Imani Christian Academy. For the first time ever, they are the single A state champions with the basketball team. Oh, it is amazing. This school, we talked about it like earlier this week that they were on the road to state those are the boys. I mean, congratulations, Amani. The school only has 187 students wow. total. Um, it's, it's a total God story. If you talk to the coaches and the students, they know it is through God and God alone, mm. this whole story. It's their 30th anniversary. So we just want to say, go Saints. We go. are so proud of you. So yeah, it's like super, super exciting, Matt. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm like thinking about the size of that school. 100, how many? 100. It's like, it's like 187 students. 187. Wow. So, you know, I graduated with a class of almost 400. Wow. You know, yeah. so to think about like just my class alone yeah. was larger than that school and they're winning championships yeah. like come on dunking you said yeah like it was going to the games i mean i'm just i'm just being so serious i have never seen in my life okay a basketball game and these boys they were like doing all those moves and they were like dunking smacking the ball out. i mean they played with so much heart it was wow. really inspiring and you know one of the coaches he said it's like a david and goliath story you know yeah. amani is this like really small school in like the east hills and for them to come this far it, they know it is literally it is the hand of god yeah. i mean it, it's it's really beautiful yeah. <laughs> I feel like maybe there's like a movie coming out of their totally, story. No, totally, the totally. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow, that's so good. Well, hey, let's get into our guest. I'm, I'm really excited to talk about just what he's doing. But our next guest uh, is a two-time Grammy-nominated singer, songwriter, and a guitar virtuoso. He's written, recorded, and performed with some of the biggest names in music. As a songwriter, his compositions have been recorded by artists such as George Jones, Reba McIntyre, Trisha Yearwood, and even Randy Travis. Tim Menzies has also released a new album earlier this month called He Reminds Me, which showcases a dozen selections, all penned or co-penned by him. He joins us now to share more about his new album and how God is using him and his music to bless others and teach people about God's love and grace. Tim, welcome to Hope Today. Thank you. It's a blessing to be here. And uh, I feel like that basketball team. Uh, uh, in this industry. It's just me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> David and Goliath, right? They yeah. the face yeah, the world. Right. Well, hey, thanks so much for joining us today. You know, we're really excited to get to know you. Be before we share about some of, you know, your ministry and what God is doing in your life, we love to tell our viewers and introduce you, you know, how has, um, how has Tim gotten to this point today to being a singer and a songwriter being nominated for Grammys? Yes, sir. Thank you. I grew up in a family band playing country music in Virginia, and we played, uh, I was unchurched, and uh, I fell in love with a Christian woman, uh, and the Lord had an eternal plan, and I didn't know that, and we've now been married 40 years, and so uh, when we had our son, he started toddling around, and she wanted to raise him in the church the way she was raised, and so they would go in the church, and, and uh it was not only Matt that I didn't go, I refused to go. Um, but the hypocrite in me, I didn't mind them going. And so uh, looking back, it's, you know, I was just dumb as a stump. There's, there's really no uh, no justifying it. And uh, one Sunday they came home from church and I was in the kitchen half asleep. And uh, my boy was about five and he walked up to me and said, how come Mammy and Papa go to church? Me and my wife's parents. And he said, me and Mama go to church and you don't. And so 
I didn't know the scripture about a little child will lead them or any of that. <laughs> so I just knew I was trapped in my kitchen by my five-year-old boy. And uh, I didn't know what else to say. And I said, well, I'm going to start going. And the Lord knew that even when I was lost, uh, that I wouldn't lie to my son. And so the next Sunday, I went to this church where they'd been going. And uh, some of that that you listed in the writing, um, all of that was happening. My writing um, career was going great. But when I walked into that little church in the country out in Mount Juliet, Tennessee, I felt what I later came to understand was the presence of the Holy Spirit meeting in that building. And uh, I was very attracted to it. And uh, that was June of 1991. In the fall of 1991, I joined a Bible study. And while studying the scripture, um, the Lord transformed my heart and I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Uh, moved to Nashville 42 years ago, wrote country songs for a living for 30 years. And the Lord called me into this ministry in 2013. And I understood it in 14. <laughs> Took me a minute. <laughs> I love that. You know, thinking about relationships, first off, you know, I'm, I'm a father of three children, and it's funny how our children will bring out the best of us, right? That sometimes they teach us a lesson more so than we're teaching them. And so I'm just thinking about, you know, the relationships that we have in our lives. You know, on, on this album in particular, you have a few different artists. Um, tell us a little bit about that. Why was it so important to bring these relationships onto this album? Yes. Well, we know the scripture says, where two or more shall gather there, while well, I will be with you. And uh, I have experienced that in the creative process. And so when you have brothers and sisters in Christ that are with you recording, um, there is a special, I think, a special anointing to it. And um, I've been in Nashville all these years, so I knew all these people from writing songs. So the Isaacs, um, Ricky Skaggs, um, uh, my wife sings with me some, um, Rhonda Vincent, Bluegrass, Dan Tominski, um, um, Rebecca Lynn Howard and Jason Crabb. And so um, we kind of, once I do my lead vocal, I kind of start dreaming <laughs> about who would, uh, who I think would sound good. And we, uh, we've been blessed that, you know, most of those people were available. That's so good. You know, I'm just thinking about um, your music in general, and obviously these relationships are great. One thing that you do with your music is, you know, it's all word based, which I feel is so powerful. But one thing you say is that you describe your song in parables, which is, you know, Jesus loved to talk in parables. Maybe you can expound a little bit about that. Like, why is that so important to you? How do you relate your music to speaking in parables? Well, uh, as you know, and y'all said earlier about the music being so powerful. Um, and I think music breaks barriers. And I think that people who um, may have had a negative experience or something uh, with church or with anything, sometimes music will soften their heart more than if you just go right into a teaching. Mm. But all of the songs that I have written in the past several years uh, since I've been calling the ministry, to me, it's very, very important to be true to the scripture. And so I start when, in my mind with the scripture and then the songs um, kind of become an application of that scripture or even, like you say, a parable. Um, and I think I find that it's been very effective because then people are hearing a scriptural truth in, in a story. And then they remember that. It's kind of like, you know, Jesus told stories all the time. Um, and so uh, I kind of try to um, remember that when I'm writing the way he taught. You know, I feel like in country music, it's, it's usually a lot of storytelling. And, you know, so that might just be kind of a natural gift for you. What do you feel is like the difference? You know, I'm just curious from when you used to write just country music to now literally writing scripture and putting it in the song. You were talking earlier how it's almost a little bit intimidating. It is. Well, because you have, there's always that additional writer in the room, the Holy Spirit, and uh, you better be true to that, <laughs> you know. So it's yeah. like I don't want to. I don't want to find out at the judgment seat I had a whole bunch of that wrong, you know. And so the the difference is, and you're exactly right in the country writing, and and I especially loved the storytelling of country writing. Um, one huge difference is the solution. Um, so if you're telling a story in a country song, the solution may be negative behavior, um, or that's what one thinks is the solution. Um, with these gospel songs, we know that the answer to everything is Jesus Christ. And so with writing the gospel songs, I'm able to get to that point at some point in the song. And every song doesn't have the exact same 
conclusion, but it's always pointing to the creator or pointing to Jesus. Um, but that storytelling, the Lord was preparing me for this ministry all these decades. And I didn't know it until I'm looking at it in hindsight. But growing up in that country band, we played in bars. And, and obviously that's not um, the best way to start. But I was obsessed with the music. And the music kept me from um, following sinful lifestyles. Um, I, of course, sin, as we all do in Romans 3.22. But anything that interfered with my playing the guitar, I didn't want to do again. And so there was something, it was almost like he was um, kind of preserving me for this ministry and preparing me for all these decades going back to childhood. Wow. We talked a little bit earlier and you were saying kind of you felt in the past few years, now more than ever, you feel like you have to introduce, you know, your songs to the world because it's so word based. Maybe you can talk a little bit about that. You know, what made this shift in you, especially with the day and age that we might live in? Yes. Well, and this shift started, um, I taught scripture, taught Bible classes, hundreds of classes for years. And that was kind of the bedrock uh, for this ministry. But in the last, um, he called me in 2013. And it seems like in the last five or six years, I feel a great urgency uh, and like, I don't know if it's my time is short <laughs> or he's coming back, but I feel a great urgency. Um, and as we watch the world, and it's not just the country, it's the world um, moving further and further away from the creator, further and further away from the answer, which is Jesus Christ. I feel compelled to be more and more present um, about uh, being a disciple and pointing to people to Jesus, it just feels to me like time is short. And I don't really, uh, it's, it's beyond my um, ability to discern exactly why I feel that way. But uh, so like I say, I don't know if it's specific to me um, or if it's, uh, if he's coming back sooner than we think. Yeah, we agree with you. We have that same sense for sure. And I know you have been, your schedule's been really full of going in, taking your music into the different churches of all different denominations, sizes, styles. What's it been like for you to take this music that's so precious from your creative point and see it out with the people? What's the response been like? That's a, that's a great question because the I learned to deal with rejection through writing songs. <laughs> if you, um, when you write songs for a living, if five or 10% of what you write a year gets recorded, that's a really good year. And so you don't, uh, you learn to trust your instincts and the ability more than the immediate response. Um, once again, he was equipping me for, for coming out because some churches are very reserved. Uh, as you say, I, I'm blessed to be invited to just many, you know, denominations. Some of them are praising God when I'm tuning. <laughs> They're ready to go, you know, and others, they wait. Uh, they'll wait for, you know, many, many songs before they kind of give you um, uh, their, their endorsement. And so uh, experiencing all of that, and having confidence in the message has proved incredibly vital because then I can trust the message um, regardless of the response. And what I have learned is eventually the response is, uh, is what I would want anyway. Tim, we've got just about a minute left with you here. And so speaking of songs, one of your most recent releases uh, on my father's side, beautifully written song. I'd love for you to share our viewers because we're going to share with them your music video, a little bit about the context. What's the story uh, behind this song? Well, I was at my home church, which is rare because I'm traveling, as Anna said, I'm traveling all the time. And uh, the pastor was preaching and he was not preaching about the divinity or the humanity of Christ. Um, and it was kind of a little sidebar. He almost said this humorously. He said, someone asked Jesus how old he was. And Jesus said, well, on my mother's side, uh, I'm 12, you know. And I just went into my songwriting trance. And we read in John 1, 
uh, that the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we read in verse 17 of John 1 that well, no one has seen God, but God, the one and only being Jesus Christ, has returned to the Father's side. Mm -hmm. And I knew that this contrast, of which I'm always fascinated, that Jesus was fully God and fully man during his earthly ministry, I, we can't fully comprehend that, but it's it's an amazing truth. And that this idea of on my mother's side, I'm 12, but on my father's side, I'm eternal, um, gave me that platform to to explore that God man, uh, for, you know, spiritual phenomenon. And um, I don't think I can ever get to the bottom of it. But um, but I thank you for for mentioning that song. And I think that um, um, it portrays the scriptural humanity and divinity of Christ. And I'm thankful for that. Well, thank you for writing it and, you know, being so willing and obedient to doing it. I believe that God has an anointing on it and he's going to use it tremendously. Th Tim, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for your ministry, you know, that's continuing to go and being sensitive to the Holy Spirit, what God's doing it today. It's, it's speaking um, major volumes in the world. Thank you. And thank you all for having me on your program. And thank you for including me in your ministry today. Absolutely. Well, hey, for all of you watching at home, if you enjoyed that interview, you're going to enjoy this music video even more on my father's side by Tim Menzies. Enjoy this video. Temple courts were crowded from the feast. I sat there surrounded by all the Pharisees. They said, Who did you study under sun? How old are you? Are you here alone? Tell us where you're from. Well, on my mother's side, I just turned 12 years old, born just down the road, down in Bethlehem. But on my father's side, I'm older than time, I am the light from up on high, the perfect lamb. The great I am on my father's side. When I knelt by that olive tree to pray, a part of me was tempted to turn and run away, but I came in the flesh. Pay the price to hang on the cross, redeem the lost, and I knew it was time. But on my mother's side, I was sweating blood, praying, Take this cup if there's another way. But on my father's side, I knew the plan we made was the only way the world could be saved. And through me, you could be on my father's side where the angels pray. Watching me hang there, then I heard all heaven shake break out in praise but on my mother's side I felt each Roman nail I could feel my body fail with every passing breath but on my father's side I rose from the grave 
I've prepared a place we can hardly wait for you to see your home with me. On my father's side On my father's our 24-7 prayer line. She had so much fear that she didn't want to leave her house. She had lost her husband of 54 years just six months earlier. Laura was flipping through TV stations when she came across Cornerstone Television. She felt compelled to call. One of our prayer partners talked, listened, and prayed with her for 45 minutes. At the end, Laura said how much the ministry had helped relieve her fear. Praise God for how He is using CTVN. When you give, you become part of what He is doing. This month, when you give, we'll send wild expectance as our way of saying thank you. This book will inspire you to live your life as God intended. To give and request your copy, visit us online at ctvn.org slash donate or call us at 888-665-4483. Hope happens here. Well, welcome back to Hope Today. We hope that you were with us before the break to enjoy that conversation with Tim Menzies. I so appreciate his heart to bring scripture, to bring the word of God right into our homes, wherever you're joining us from. And we want to bring you some of God's word today. And it comes from Colossians 3, which is one of my very favorite chapters. Like if you have a few minutes today, make the few minutes actually, go read the whole chapter of Colossians 3. But it says this, let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Gosh, I mean, there's just so much to unpack in the scripture. I think one of the parts that really sticks out to me is let the message of Christ dwell among you richly. Mm. So when we have the message of Christ, which is the word of God, and we have it dwelling inside of us, then when we are with others, it tends to just overflow from our hearts onto the people around us. And it might not even be directly speaking scripture to them, but it's just exuding this love of Christ, the peace of Christ, the forgiveness, the compassion to those around us, because truly you might be the only Jesus that people ever see. You might be the only Bible they ever read. And so as they spend more time around you, even like Tim said, his wife, his son, what an influence they had on him to bring him to Christ, that you have the ability to speak God's word, to just exude Jesus to those around you and draw people to Christ. You know, the, I like what you were saying, Anna, what really like stuck out to me was like in the songs from the singing, like from the, excuse me, the songs from the spirit. And just when you're talking, I had this flashback. I remember one of my favorite moments of worship. It was just like in my, like, uh, like I was 26 or 27. I was going through this whole like spiritual awakening. And I remember being around this huge group. It was like, everybody was like 20, 30, 50, everything. And just for a moment we stopped and we paused and we were in this hotel, mm. this huge like hotel room. And we just started making up our own song and worshiping to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And it was so beautiful. And those are some of my favorite moments when we just let down our agendas, let down our plans, and we just allowed the Holy Spirit to move through us and in us as one. 
and the new sound that arises. It is truly beautiful. And that's something I feel like in this season and in my heart that God is doing a new thing as we see moves of God breaking out all over the world. He wants to sing a new song through all of us in unity, coming together of every color, of every creed, of every background. It is truly beautiful, Matt, when we're all yeah. able to come together. Yeah. As well. You know, one thing that I'm even just hearing you say when you guys are just coming together with your own song, but one thing in the scripture, it says do it with gratitude, right. you know, gratitude in your heart. And I feel like when you have gratitude, it changes everything every attitude, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like even in ourselves, but man, can I encourage you even watching at home, whatever atmosphere, whatever room in your family, in your marriage, man, maybe just choose to be thankful, you know, have a, an, an attitude of gratitude because it will change the atmosphere. It will change everything that you're going through personally. And I know some of you might be faced with some heavy things. You might be stressed out and feeling the weight of everything on you right now, but let's choose to have an attitude of gratitude. It changes our perspective and it helps us to lean not on ourselves, but Anna, it helps us to lean truly on God. Yeah, it absolutely does. I mean, the Lord inhabits our praise. He yeah. inhabits our worship. And so whenever you're feeling like God is far, I mean, first of all, he's always so near to you. But when we actively begin to praise him, to worship him, suddenly the presence of God fills the room, fills yes. your heart, and he becomes so near. And isn't it true? That's how we fight our battles. So if yeah. you feel like you're in some kind of a battle today and the storm is raging around you, begin to worship, begin to praise, set yourself before the Lord and let the peace of God dwell in you so that you can stand firm in the midst of it. Just like I was listening to worship music on my way today, the devil's got no hold on you. The shackles have broken off your feet. Like just start declaring it and things begin to change. You know, just one thing I just recently found out is, I don't know if you know this, but like if you look in the Hebrew word and we say Yeshua, and Yeshua, that name means deliverance and different things, but did you know Yeshua means victory? So when we sing that saying that his name is victory, it's like we're really, we're speaking of the person, the divinity of Jesus. And so when we worship him, when we praise him, when we give our worship, we're like, we're saying Yeshua, Yeshua, we're praising him. I like to think of that Yeshua song that a lot of churches are singing, that we're singing about the victory. And we know that he is victory because he overcame death. And because he resurrected, that that same power that resurrected in Jesus, and when we receive Jesus as our Lord and our Savior, as our Adonai, is in us. So maybe today you need to declare and decree that Jesus' victory, he is in me. And because he's victorious, I am victorious over every circumstance, over every circum every, everything that you're walking through and you're going through. And you know what? That is the greatest hope that we have is through Jesus. And we're so glad that you joined us for Hope today. Have a wonderful weekend. We love you.